We turn overseas tonight into our reporting trip to South Sudan. Tonight, what we witnessed on the ground, there is an urgent effort underway to get food and aid into a country that knows war. But right now, they're in a battle against something else, a changing climate. Tonight here, the new emergency now unfolding. The only route in bringing aid in from Sudan has now been halted because of the deadly violence to the north that began while we were in the region. Tonight in South Sudan, the aid workers who say we must do something, they say children's lives are at stake. We land in South Sudan, where we are told there is an urgent effort to get to more than a million people in desperate need because of climate. The UN trucks waiting. We head out to the World Food Program, traveling down the only road in, carrying aid from Sudan. And we're there as the last convoy makes it in from Sudan before the deadly violence breaks out to the north. Mud walls holding the water back. And then the only way to get to so many of the families here is by boat. What's happening here is staggering. Climate change making the extremes here, the drought and the floods, only more extreme. Four years in a row now of historic flooding, waters unable to recede. This is a very common sight here after four years of relentless rains. This is a tiny piece of land completely surrounded uh, by the waters here, an island in and of itself. And these are the families that have stayed behind to continue to raise their children here. But what do they feed the children here with no land to farm on anymore? We are told the water lilies. And then we see her, a mother in the distance. The haunting sounds, the coughing, the quiet splashing in the water, the determined work in stagnant, dangerous floodwaters. The water nearly to her chest, reaching down to pull out the water lilies and their bulbs. This mother reaching down so far, she is nearly underwater herself. It is what they do for their children. And this mother who proudly shows the bulbs to us. They dry them and pound them into paste to feed them to their children. Mothers are feeding their children water lilies. Unfortunately, they are. It is a coping mechanism because they do not have enough food. How do they get any food when they're completely surrounded by water? Uh, that is a biggest challenge that uh, they are facing here, the availability of food. Before they had land where they could cultivate food, but now they are completely cut off. Families cut off with so little land and no livestock. It's just a stunning sight to see the cows out here in the middle of, of the water. This used to be farmland before the floods. The livestock, uh, it's impossible to know just how much has been lost uh, during these floods, but you can see they're nothing but skin and bones, these cows here, uh, still searching for something to eat uh, and basically marooned out here in the middle of the water. We meet three siblings on the water. What do you have there? They tell us they have gathered grass and sticks. They're saying they're trying to take them to town so that they could sell it. And what will people use it for? She's saying that they're going to use them to construct their homes. And they're now bringing it now to where most people are on the other side of the yes. dike, hoping yeah. to sell it for people building homes yeah. on the other side of the flood. Yeah. We make it to one of the islands, the children at the water's edge, many of them with bellies that signal the emergency. The woman who greets us with a smile Hello. as we head to find the makeshift clinic here. We're told of the families on this island uh, who have come to the nutrition center uh, for help, and you can see the mothers and their children here. Uh, they're waiting to be screened, but they have all brought their children here for help. This little boy among the children here, a hint of a smile. All of them waiting for help. Women bring their children here. The children Achal Chand is the head of nutrition for the World Food Program here in South Sudan. The nutrition assistant will now measure the child's uh, upper arm. They are trying to determine the level of malnutrition. He's marking the child's arm to get the midpoint of the upper arm. The mother and her baby, who is just one. What did you find? I find that uh, this child is malnourished. Malnourished. We ask her, how did she feed her child before today? What are you able to feed your child? She's saying that they only feed her water lilies. Water lilies. 
And we learn here that the children most at risk have been brought here to the state hospital in Bentu. Children on the brink of starvation. And we see it. The nine-year-old boy, John Chol, drinking water and then slowly falling back down onto his bed. And we learn of the young mother, her baby just 40 days old, a little more than a month, weighing less than four pounds. You must be relieved that your baby is doing much better. She's saying yes. Yes, she says. Her newborn son and his tiny grip, a sign of hope here. These children, they say, are the innocent victims of climate change. Cause of the climate change. You think it's because of the climate change? That is what I can say. So. I mean, the land has changed. The land is about flooded. The land is flooded, actually. There is no area for cultivation. And that is because of the climate change. Out on those tiny slivers of land, they look for the children most at risk. Grace Nyakoth is from here. She now works for the World Food Program. What do you make of the, of the change in climate? It's only a few weeks to, to rain a season, and this might wasn't with time as, uh, as it is. It's all flooded everywhere. And you haven't even <laughs> begun wet season, yeah. rainy season? The rainy season is only two weeks to three weeks. From now? From now. We're on the front lines right here of climate change. Yeah, no, I think there's no question. This is the front lines. This is where we're seeing the change. That's not just one extreme event. Bill Null monitors the change in climate for the World Food Program. After one year, you might think you can come back and start again. But after four years of cumulative flooding, I think people are, are starting to think that this is a long-term change. Have you ever seen anything like this? No, 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 no. I, never imagined anything quite at this scale. Scientists and researchers with the UN have studied the wet season growing more extreme here. From 2019 to 2020, the waters that did not recede. And then 2021, 2022, and this is now. They say the wetlands have tripled in size in just four years. And as we're on the ground here, we see it. The people here know what's coming again in just weeks. We witness an extraordinary scene. The women building a mud wall by hand, a dike, to hold any new floodwaters back. To try to reclaim some of their land. They are up against overwhelming challenge, and yet still a smile on this woman's face. If you look over my shoulder here, you can see the very top of somebody's hut where a family once lived. And, and once you recognize what that is, you can see it sort of peppering the landscape here, the, the water's edge. Uh, home after home, just completely destroyed. In fact, the water so deep in some places, the World Food Program uses amphibious vehicles to get to communities hardest to reach. We travel with them as they pass by old villages no longer. And when we finally get there, hours into this journey, the children running toward us. And something unexpected, we hear the children's voices. The singing under the tree. These are the school children here, and this is where they now hold their class. A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, D, E. We see them sitting on little pots, old cans, buckets, the children are always the most resilient. We witnessed it everywhere we went. The little girl Hi. and her fist bump. Hi. And then all of the children we wanted in too. These little smiles and their waves, this is what keeps the aid workers going here. The children still learning, still singing. The faces of hope the children and their strength in South Sudan. And as you saw there, they know the next rainy season, their next wet season begins in just weeks. If you would like to help, you can go to wfpusa.org slash ABC South Sudan. A final note before we go tonight after our trip to South Sudan, the lasting image for us, the strength of the children, the smiles right there, the fist bump from the little girl in the dress, and then all of the children wanting in, the waves, the smiles, and really everywhere we went, the resilience. 
Again, if you would like to help, you can go to wfpusa.org slash ABC South Sudan. And we've shown this to you before. Sometimes all it takes is one of these nutritional packets. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.